The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Doug Kent pulls out of Canadago, New York. He won his first PBA title last year at the Greater Detroit Open. His opponent, Steve Jaros, owns two titles. He's after his first win since 93 from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Our second seed, Pete Weber, trying to win his 24th title in front of a hometown crowd. Pete and Weber. And our tournament leader, at whom he pointed a moment ago, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., Third one of the year, that's what he's looking for from Stockton, California. Hello, everyone. Bo Burton and I are happy that you join us today for our 14th of the year last who knows when. But nevertheless, uh, Bo, we have 68 or so titles among our bowlers here today. And uh, the excitement is going to be hectic here. And if we can keep the tears away, pal, <laughs> we'll do all right. Well, 36 years for Miss, Mr. Shankle, 23 for me, but I think three dog night put it best. The show must go on. So let's The curtain is going up, and it'll come down later, too. See you later. The 1997 version of the King of the Hill matches, it was Ricky Ward unseating Walter Ray Williams, Jr., the number one player in the world. Ricky won the Detroit Open. And bowl a fabulous 257 as he took the best and measure of Walter Ray. Today he'll try to defend his King of the Hill title against the Wichita Open winner, Brian Boss. Brian should be very tough. Won last week, finished fifth this week, and one of the great competitors in all of PBA history. Next, the King of the Hill match. Okay, King of the Hill match presented by the Showboat. Well, here's the setup for the King of the Hill, Chris. Uh, Brian Boss had an excellent week, finished fifth in the tournament, just missed the championship round. And Ricky Ward, who just whacked Walter Ray last week, really struggled this week in the tournament. It's going to be interesting to see if the lefty can compete with the righty. Here we go. Oh, a pesky four pin for Brian Boss. Coincidentally, was two years old when we started this series of telecasts back in uh, 19... Uh, 62. Ricky Ward, on the other hand, uh, waited eight years to be born after we got started. The four pin for Voss at a good opening shot. 50 lane bowling center. Synthetic lanes laid over the old wood lanes. Beautiful. $10,000 to the winner. And the winner naturally walks away with the check. The loser. A lot of glory by being on our last telecast, folks. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Two things to watch for Ricky Ward here. Number one, last week he only averaged 202, but came out and shot 257, as you see him with a somewhat errant shot here in his first frame. And look at that rack. If you'll notice very closely, the one and three pins are separated on the right and closed on the left. And what that does, uh, really, is it makes it very difficult for the left-hander to penetrate into the five pins. So it's a slightly open rack for the right-handers, a big disadvantage for Ricky Ward. Now, he's playing a medium line in this area, and he's throwing a real solid lifted ball right between the second and third arrows. Well, he uh, left one on the opposite side now, a six pin. I'd like to point out here early that I've only had two full-time sidekicks on this series. The first was Billy Whalu, and for the last 23, Bo. Thank you, partner. It's been a play. 
And I might add that we're in the Jack Buck's hometown, although he was born in Ohio. Um, he worked with me for a while, as did Jim Simpson. Some big names there. Mm -hmm. Jack Buck, an avid bowling fan. Now we look at Brian Boss. Look at him in front of the rack. He's playing the big hook, and these racks stick out about six feet on the approach. Brian goes in front of him. <laughs> Rather unusual leave. Brian Boss crosses over Never to seen that in my life. <laughs> Never. All right, and we'll see it here as you see him coming from an inside line, not playing that extreme outside line we saw before. But watch the action on the left-hand part of the screen. The ball actually drives through and takes out the four straight back, and I agree with him. I've never seen a solid Brooklyn 7. Very unusual. So this is the King of Hill match, the showboat King of the Hill match, and it's... Featuring Brian Voss, who won in Wichita, and Ricky Ward, who won in Detroit. The full grip of Voss, great player, but his main weapon is physical strength. This guy is physically strong. the Mississippi River, not too far from the great metropolis of St. Louis. Six ten. Well, what Ricky Ward is trying to do is the same as probably trying to hit a driver 300 yards into a 12-yard wide yeah. fairway. Look at how tight this pocket is as this camera pans in. See the one and three are wide open. Well, that's for the right-handers. The lefty's very tight. Dave Schroeder, who is down controlling things on the headset in connection with our producer, Carol Levy, and our director, Norm Salmon. Good, good break for Ricky Ward getting his first strike in four frames. As we have a little feedback, we're going to leave and return. and Ricky Ward will continue their head-to-head -head King of the Hill match. Boss leads by two pins, strike up the third, can extend his lead over Ricky Ward to 12 with a strike. Well now, Nelson, you're, you're a giver of tips. How should, should we shoot this one? Well, Chris, I think with a strike up, you got to go for the pin count. So he's got to go over in the, the, the three in the right-hand corner and try to bounce them around and knock them out. Boss is up very quickly here, giving it a whack. This is the right thing to do. Mm. Wow. These, these pros are incredible. That's the as close as you can come without making it. Uh, one trivia note, the only player to ever make that split on ABC is in our telecast today. Doug Kent made that in 1991 in Baltimore. Doug will be in the opening match. Six on the left lane, and Doug will be... They're not easy Steve. out there, folks. I'm telling you what. <laughs> He says they're not easy. Actually, the pros this week, for a total of 2,196 games, average just 196. Now, you're talking about the best players in the world, so it was a very demanding lane condition, although I think Boss is playing the wrong line. I think it's an outside line this week. Okay, coming up next, except on the West Coast on ABC Sports, we go live to the Winston West NASCAR circuit for the Auto Club 200 from the California Speedway in Fontana. California. See if Ward can jump on this open frame. He has a little better rack. The pins don't come down exactly the same every time. There's a half-inch tolerance legally. Four seven. 
You know, this just reflects the scoring we've seen, Chris, in the last eight or nine weeks on the Pro Bowlers Tour. The uh, PBA has opted to put out a very demanding lane condition, and obviously the best pullers are getting to the top. you got the Webers and the Walter Rays, but it's very difficult to score. Tim Tim separating these two professionals. 28-year-old Ricky Ward, <laughs> at whom we're looking. Uh, it's time for the pipe. <laughs> He likes the nickname that we coined for him last week. As you look at the beef, I call him the beef. He once posed for a ladies beefcake magazine. This guy likes the nickname Bulldog. Yeah. Strike in the sixth frame for Ricky Ward. Now uh, boss back up with his spare working. He'll be shooting in the sixth. A little contemplating here by boss. I think his best One move. More time. One more time. He's he's way over here in front of the ball return rack, slide in this area, and it'll be right over the center line. Now this is very dry right here in the center though, so he really has to project the ball. All right, beef, here's what you do. That inside line's not working. Here you see the angle he's playing between the fourth and fifth arrows, trying to just sail it back in the pocket, but it's very dry in the center of the lane. The best shot, you'll see it from our power finalist, will be outside the first arrow. Spare in the sixth for Brian Voss. Andrea, Joshua, and Cameron in Atlanta watching this telecast. They're, they never miss one when dad and husband is on the tube. Can't blame him. Not only yeah. a great player, but uh, make ten thousand dollars if you can win this game. Here we go, seventh frame. Lovely, grand boss. It's only his second strike of this match. And look at the form, and look at the anxiety, and the hoping and wishing, and he gets it. We'll be back. We're back again in uh, southern Illinois, just across the mighty Mississippi from St. Louis. We just had a nice thing happen to him as we look at Ricky Ward. Uh, two dozen roses, red and white, with the card, good luck and best wishes in your new endeavors. Clyde and Marcy Ward. I don't want to try to read those again. But thank you, Ward, for your son. We appreciate it. <laughs> Ricky, your mom and dad would have good taste in flowers, believe me. They are gorgeous. Right, Lorinda? The two. Okay, Nelson Burton, Jr. Thank you, Chris. With me is Doug Kent. Doug, fourth place, uh, 36 years on ABC. What is your best memory of the telecast? 36 years? I'm only 30 years old, so I, I wouldn't know. Uh, I think I, I really like the old shows of Mark Roth and Marshall Holman. Those shows have so much uh, quality and mem good memories. But my the one that stands out the most is probably the year I bowled Pete Weber in his hometown. And I'm looking for a rematch today. Hopefully that'll happen. He's a great young player coming up, Chris, and he'll be in the next match. You bet. And he's from a lovely area, Canandaigua, New York. And Ricky now will have to attempt to cover 3-5 and shouldn't be any problem for him. Ricky Ward of North. Fort Myers, Florida. That was a good spare there. That was a spare. <laughs> <coughs> Unbelievable. Look at this careful setup by Brian Voss. Eight ten on the right lane. All right, boss, trying an outside line now. You, he gave up on that inside, and the ball sails a long oil. He's a two eight ten, a split we see so often in the PBA tour. The best thing he can do is just try to bounce the two and eight over into the ten. No can do. No, Bo. It's sec second open frame now. Got to finish on that lane. Bo. 
All right, Chris, and with me over here is Steve Jarrow. Steve, uh, obviously, uh, you're only 30 years old, and so you couldn't see the first six years of the PBA Tour, but what's your fondest memory? Well, I'll tell you, I think I'm uh, much like everybody else. I, I think I used to rush home from junior leagues to watch the Tour growing up. A lot of idols out here that I get to compete against now. Um, among that, I, I got to win my first title the first time I was ever on TV, and I'll, I'll never forget that. There's memories that'll last a lifetime. He's a great player. He'll be up in the next match, Chris, and he was very kind to me. He only beat me 498 pins this week. Back to you. <laughs> But though, like the Olympic creed, it's not in winning, but taking part. <laughs> Fair in the ninth frame, and Ricky Ward leads by 24. Spare up, ninth frame shot. Well, Ricky Ward's going to win this match, Chris, by default. Uh, the very demanding conditions we've seen all year. And once again, uh, it kind of reflects in the 300s. In 1996, there were six perfect games per tournament. This year, there's only been three perfect games per tournament. So much more demanding lane conditions. You know, tonight on ABC, it's a whole new look on Saturday night. First, Urkel and the Family Matters gang moved to Saturday, followed by Mark Curry in the season premiere of Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, then Annie Potts stars in Dangerous Minds, followed by an all-new spy game. Tonight, you want to be on ABC. Nine pins for a victory on the first ball. Nine pins. 10,000 right there. So, I'm happy. <laughs> the son of the parents that sent us flowers, Bo. Oh, my. So nice. I'll tell you what, Brian Boss, nice guy too. He says, hey, oh, you yeah. happy with that 10,000? Well, the boat log ate the beef today. 194 with a spare. Who am I, my step up in front of you, dude? There's the winner as this ABC Sports presentation. Our professional bowlers will continue after this word from our ABC station. Yes, plying their trade on the mighty Mississippi. As in the first match, Ricky Ward defeated Boss 194 to 167, and now Steve Jarrus and Doug Kent go after the top prize of the St. Clair Classic. You know, uh, the father of the PBA and also the PBA Tour, uh, one of the most wonderful men I've ever known, though, uh, he represented both of us as well. Yes. Eddie Alas, who's recuperating in... Um, uh, Naples, Florida, and, and there's a shot of him. One of the most energetic and brilliant, wonderful guys. What a super, super genius. And with his wife, Peggy, in better days. The big E. The thing yes, you sure. can say about Eddie Elias is brilliant and loyal. Two great qualities. Now, the godfather of professional bowling, he can watch two of his young warriors, Steve Jarrus and Doug Kemp. Neither having been born when we started this with Eddie in 1962, 30 year old Doug Kemp. Both these guys are going to make a lot of telecasts. They are really starting to make their stock worthwhile out here. And you see Doug, who's a very versatile player, big guy, strong, opting for a little bit different line on the left hand lane, that outside line, which I think is the best. See him for his spare. It's going to be a pretty simple spare shot. Great technique. No hook at all. Just a dead straight ball. He may even hit the thumb hole. With the name Doug Kent, you know what the fellow bowlers nicknamed him, don't you? C L A R K. He keeps improving. Uh, they'll take that with uh, real meaning right now. Now, Steve Jaros, who has had one of the hottest years on a Pro Bowlers Tour. You want to see a contemporary release. Watch his release. Teach your son that if you're teaching him to bowl. Yeah. Solid eight. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> They're tough enough without getting wrapped. Steve Jaros being watched by his mother, his fiance, and her parents. Okay. 
little bit uh, later on today, you're going to see some video clips, the history of the tour, a little history on me, uh, a little on Bo, and uh, very important is the video clip that salutes the people that make this happen, those technical and production stars of 97. You'll see their names, and I want you to applaud when it comes up. Crossing over, and unfortunately a 3-9 for Steve Jaros. Our statistician, as always today, is just doing a great job. Mr. Butch Soper. No finer gentleman have we met. about that sleeper nine. And Bo is with Mr. Ward. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Ricky, uh, kind of a tough one victory there, 10,000 bucks. But second question, you're 28 years old. How long have you been watching the tour, and what's your fondest memory? Well, uh, I, I'd have to say the fondest memory is the first title, and obviously the second one was uh, awesome, too. And uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years, but... Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Bo and Chris for like being two, the greatest two announcers in our game today. And i also like to take Brunswick for some fine bowling balls. Thank you. Good luck. And he's going to win a lot more, Chris. Back to you, Parts. Okay. And by the way, Ricky, if you're listening, thanks for the flowers. Now Doug Kent. That strike came in the second frame. can make it a 12-pin advantage of the strike here. Yeah. All right. Well, our first double of the match, car of the day, Doug Kent. And I like the line these guys are playing. They're not playing much hook. Pretty good revolutions, 12 to 14 revs on the ball, but down the boards. Both players very versatile. They can hook it off the lane or muscle it straight down. That is a 10 pin on the right. It is very humid outside, very, very warm. A lot of mold spores in the air. Uh, so you get a few sniffles along the way. And the pins have the sniffles, Chris. They yeah, actually they absorb some of that humidity and can gain as much as two ounces and lose their bounce. Okay. Jairus with a little powder on his thumb. Just works it to get it smooth so he can relax it. His fiance, June Dubiakis, kind of a tough one to say. They're getting married in September 6th. Honeymoon in Japan. Okay. Well, the game tightens up as we look at June D, and we'll be back. We are in Southern Illinois. Capacity crowd at St. Clair Bowl. Fans realizing that uh, the television cameras are once again illuminated. <laughs> And uh, they have been so supportive of this tournament, the last of 1997. Yeah. Now he has a three-bagger and a 23-pin lead. Okay, Nelson. Thank you, Chris. Uh, a man who's 34 years old, Peter, obviously the first two years of the PBA, you weren't even around. I've known you since a little kid and one of the great players. What is your most fond memory of the tour? Well, Bo, uh, gosh, it's, it's so, so hard to say, but I guess the one that sticks out is obviously the trophy dropping. <laughs> you know, maybe remember me beating you in St. Louis? That wasn't very memorable, Bo. <laughs> All right, good luck this week, Peter. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> Incidentally, in the highlights of um, this series, uh, there is a replay on the trophy dropping. <laughs> And we're in Anheuser-Busch country, of course, near near St. Louis, and it was the Anheuser-Busch Eagle Trophy. Gorgeous thing. As a class that they are, they replaced it. 
Okay, Doug Kent uh, he opened with a spare, three in a row, another spare here in the fifth frame of the opening game in the battle for the title of the St. Clair Classic. Steve Jaros hasn't won a match on national television since 1993 at Edmond, Oklahoma. He is zero and eight his last eight attempts. This is the line he's playing. I like it. By doubling, he has cut the lead of um, Kent to 12. The winner to meet Pete Weber and then Walter Ray Williams Jr. What an incredible field. You have the numbers one and two bowlers in the world in the number one and two positions. And as you see Jaro shot, he is ranked number nine in the world, and Doug Kent, no slouch, 14th in the world. Top players. I had the luxury of bowling 18 games with Steve uh, this week. As you see him drifting a little bit high on this left-hand lane. And he has a very solid spare game. Watch how he cuts that hook down and goes across lane for this 3-6. Very important to have this shot in your bag. Okay. This series for 36 years, always produced by ABC Sports. Edgar Sherrick and Chet Simmons sports programs got together with Eddie Elias, made it happen, and then sports programs was purchased by American Broadcasting Company, and Ruin Arley just took it from there, sailed it high. Well, Doug Kent, from that inside line we saw Brian Boss featuring, uh, is, finally came somewhat close to the pocket. You see in that deep inside line for the four pin, he has a little different technique than some of the players. He avoids the right side of the lane and shoots it straight down here. Now, if you can't throw a straight ball, you can't try it. You'd have to come across this way. I still like this angle best over here to the left of your screen, but Kent's a good spare shooter. Okay. I first uh, met Doug as he came on tour in 1988. He won his first title, actually a regional title. The PBA is broken down into seven regions as an amateur. He was a guest, wiped out the field, and this has been his livelihood since, and he is really a rising star. Sliding, sliding, sliding. Leading the one, two, four on the left lane. We well, see Doug just throwing the ball through the break. The PBA has oiled the lanes 25 feet. They've buffed it down to 35 feet, or 28 to 35. And what happens if you throw it a little too hard to make it hold up at the pocket, then it slides by the head pin. Very demanding shot making condition. And it's absolutely mandatory that you be a good spare shooter when you have this type of conditions. All right. Doug Kent going against Steve Jaros. Ten pins separating them. Here's Walter Ray Williams Jr., number one in the world, and he's number one in this tournament. Right now, Steve Jaros up in the eighth frame, left a 4-7 spare in the seventh. He trails by 12. Doug Kent been protecting a 20 pin lead, which has now been reduced to 12. Eighth frame, first game of the championship match. The winner of this game will meet Pete Weber. And Doug Kent with the split. Oh, goodness, goodness. Six, seven, ten, Nelson. Well, Chris, you know, it is very difficult. We're watching players struggle out here, and people at home say, well, why can't these guys make these splits like this or they keep leaving them like that and so what they have to do is read the lane as you see the six seven ten split this is the way to make it slide the six over into the seven
All right, tomorrow on ABC Sports at 1 Eastern, 12 Central, 3 Pacific, you'll see drag racing action at its fastest and most furious. It's the Pontiac Nationals from National Trail Raceway in Columbus, Ohio. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports. Columbus, just up the road from Marion, Ohio. All right, Doug Kent coming up in the ninth frame took just a little rest, but to gather his thoughts, he has gone from a 12-pin lead to two pins in arrears, ninth frame, first match. What are you going to do after uh, today's telecast? <laughs> Directly after, I'm going home with my four children. Okay. But I'm going to do some bowling, Chris. Uh, okay. I got in pretty good bowling shape, cashed in five of eight mm -hmm. tournaments this year on the regular tour. Uh, take a little swing at the seniors. Those guys look awfully tough, but uh, <laughs> that looks like fun. So, kind of looking forward to a summer of bowling. Jaros with a chance to take a 12-pin lead once again goes high on the right-hand lead, leading the three, six, nine, ten. Now you're going to see a different technique from Steve making this because the back pin is the key pin, the nine pin. So he'll play a, some hook into the nine pin. It's a tough shot. Well, Chris, you know I'm going to bowl a little this summer, maybe do a little water skiing. Uh, how about Chris Schenkel? What are you going to do out there in Indiana? Well, I've got to go to Oklahoma next week. Um, uh, Nadia Komanich and Bart Connor invited me to emcee the opening of the International Gymnastics Hall of Fame there. So that'll be uh, my next trip. Hey, fantastic. How oh, about yeah. the rest of the summer? I'll just drive the heck out of the Shelby Mustang and Tiger. <laughs> and wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> and I'm sure it's ringing as we speak. Well, partner, the match has come down to just a one-pin differential. With a spare and a strike, Steve Jaros would make Doug Kent a double. Fairly easy spare the two-pin, straight at it. This is a difficult situation. Obviously, he has a uh, one-pin lead, but you're not even close around the pocket more than half the time. What do you do? I think it's, you can actually be relaxed in this situation because you're not getting a dependable roll on the ball. Just take a guess, make your best shot. That changes the whole hmm. ball game. If he had gotten nine, he'd have forced Doug Kent to strike right now. Kent needs just a spare and nine pins. This ball looks good for 45 feet. All of a sudden, a left turn, seven count, final score 199. Kent, spare and nine, wins the opening match. Right now, Doug Kent. He avoids the split, has somewhat of an air in shot up there high, leaves the 10 pin. They'll use a lot of speed, go across lane, and then it's be interesting to see if he tries to get nine pins all year long. We have not had a tie match. If he gets spare and eight, we have our first tie of the 1997 season. Carefully checking that score sheet and the monitor. Melly's wondering, should I just throw it hard down the middle and take a chance, or do I go with my best strike ball? He has just one strike, on, has actually two strikes on this lane. Nine are strike to win, eight tie, seven lose. to 199. You know whether it's your strike ball or your spare shot, hand position is critical, according to Randy Peterson on today's Tip of the Week.
Sandy Peterson, three-time All-American and PBA national champion. Randy, as you travel around the country bowling and pro-ams, what is the question that your amateurs ask you most? Well, well, I think the question I get asked most is release. They want to know how to throw that big hook. And the way you do this is we got to get your hand and wrist underneath the ball at release. The way this happens is as the ball starts to fall from the top of the swing, we want that hand to fold to the inside part of the ball. When this happens, it takes your elbow and keeps it inside. No more chicken winging. And that gets that hand and wrist in a real powerful position at the bottom. Notice how the hand stays quite well underneath the ball at release. Pretty good result. Perfect. But we don't always strike, Randy. When you leave a spare, do you still play that big rainbow hook? Absolutely not. When that happens, when you leave a spare, what you want to do now is break your wrist back, leave it there through the whole shot, just get that ball to come back and through with that wrist staying in that position. Notice my wrist broken back. You just get it back and through. No tricks. Great tip from Randy Peterson for your strike ball. Get your arm underneath the ball, arm close to your body. Then you'll have the big hook. However, if you leave a spare, break that wrist back, take the hook out of it. You'll improve your spare making and your score. So there you see it, the first nights of the St. Clair Classic. Uh, Steve Jarvis just losing out by one single pin. Doug Kent, 200. Steve, um, 199. Well, Chris, I think the action's going to pick up here. Uh, Pete Weber coming on. He'll probably uh, play that outside line. He bowls a lot in this house, and he's going to give Doug Kent all he can handle. I'll tell you, Bo, working with you for 23 years and being a big fan of yours and watching most of your 17 championships, I think we ought to do a little retrospective here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, just take a look at the skill of Buddy Holly, Bo Burton. <laughs> that was back in uh, 1970, Nelson, my boy. We move up a couple of more years, and nice hairdo. Thank you. Even better. Look at the muscles, of Nelson Burton, Jr. And now, in uh, 1984, when he won his 17th title, and there we are in the pretty blue jackets. Whatever happened to those? <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, fans. And thank you, especially my ABC crew that spent so many years with me and took such time to put that together. I'll always cherish it. Thank you very much. We're giving you a 1,000 copies of it, buddy. <laughs> All right, Doug Kent won his first match by a narrow margin of one pin with a 200-game clean game going against Weber. And Adagla, New York, where the great boxer Carmen Basilio hung his gloves and hats for many years. One of my favorite fighters of all time. Pete, hey. as he prepares, going to the rosin, and he put an extra piece of tape in the thumb hole. He's ready to go. Rookie of the year, 1980. <laughs> His father, Dick, looking on. There he, you saw him. Pete is trying to win the last tournament of this series. There's Dick. Dick won the first one in 1962, right here in Illinois. And there's uh, Pete's wife, Tracy. and pumped up near his his home of St. Anne, Missouri. Mm. Look at it. Intensity to win 23 championships, 29 regional titles. Nice crossover. Oh, little Brooklyn action here. Come on in. Thank you, Chris. Steve Jaros, uh, that looks like a lot of fun out there. <laughs> yeah, they're tough. You know, the, the scores have been a little bit low all week, but the other potential has been there to bowl good. Um, I struggled a little bit the last couple rounds yesterday with, with shot making. I tended to cut a few shots off. I did it today, but you know, I kind of hung in there. I thought I had that one. You've got a great year going. Good luck the rest of the year, year Chris, and he's going to win some more titles. Back okay. to you. Doug was trying to make it three in a row here in the semifinal game. But uh, he's going to have a two and sleeper eight 
to cover. There it is. Very often from that perspective, bowler's perspective, you don't even see the eight pin. Oh, no. Chopped it off. What a bad break, though. Well, Chris, there's oil on the outside. And you see Pete Weber playing that little ridge of oil, but then Doug Kent trying to go across the lane for the 2-8. See him go between the first and second arrow. There's oil, oil, oil. Then all of a sudden he gets to the center of the lane in just an acute left turn angle over towards the 2-8 and goes right by. Open the door for Weber, who seems like the only person so far has anything resembling a strike line on this pair. Keep going over the other side, and he's left the 6-10. Pete has been on our telecast most of the 84 TV appearances that he's had. Imagine that, 84, and he's only 34. <laughs> he gave a long, hard look at his father, Dick, for the great Hall of Famer, who was shaking his head from side to side. Well, Dick is the uh, obviously is. one of the greatest bowlers, if not the greatest of all time, and giving a little advice to his son. There he is. For my money, uh, they can all tee it up against him, and they'll finish second. So, uh, obviously, his son's trying to rewrite some of his records. want to see a real good break watch the 2-8 that's the third pin on the left hand part of your screen the head pin goes to the sideboard hits the four and the four comes back and hits the two pin knocking it out avoids the split Pete Weber and Doug Kent in the semifinal match the winner to meet Walter Ray Williams all here on ABC Sports uh, as we look at Pete Weber his opponent uh, Doug Kent in the fourth frame left of the 5-7 split um, recorded a back-to-back -back opens now, trailing by 22, and he has this monster, the 2-4-10. Three consecutive open frames, bad break for Doug Kemp. Bo? Thanks, Chris. As uh, both players struggle tremendously out there, Walter Ray, uh, you're up next. But uh, a quick thought on uh, our ABC crew and the production that you've been around so much of the last well, 12, 13 years. Well, a lot of them are uh, really good friends of mine. Uh, Chris Schenkel and you, you've been great pals of mine. Uh, it's fun working on ABC, bowling on ABC. I think everybody back home, they ought to get together and uh, call their local stations and say, we want bowling on, bowl on ABC. Hey, thanks for the commercial parts. Good luck at a championship match. Back to you, Chris. Well, like we always say, Bo knows, <laughs> Walter Ray knows, because ABC covers bowling better than anyone. And I've been so proud to be a part of it. They've spent the bucks to make the production look good to you at home. <laughs> Pete Weber, uh, double, striking the fifth and sixth frames and 44 pins, so getting a little, a little closer to the dream match to end our journey. It looks like unless Doug Kent can put something together as he moves to the deep inside line that it's going to be Weber and Williams in the final. Five frames left, though. Let's look at Doug Kent's game. Mm -hmm. Not only is he going long at a 173 pace, and when I say pace like that, I mean strikes fair, strikes fair, strikes fair. The guys can't even do that today. First frame, he played inside. Second frame, inside. Third frame, outside. Fourth frame, inside. Fifth frame, outside. Sixth frame, inside. There is no possible way you can get on track jumping around like that. You've got to pick a line and stick with it. Okay, fine spread. Tomorrow night on ABC, it's all family entertainment with Second Noah and America's Funniest Home Videos. Then... Ah, Lisa Hartman Black stars in the Sunday night movie, Someone Else's Child. All tomorrow night on ABC. For Doug Kent, he has all the shots. He has to just pick out a power shot and wind on it. He needs strikes to catch Peter. Hey, Bo. Well, I'll, I'll get to you a little bit later as we're going to take a break here in Illinois, but return. Doug Kent in his second game today 
is facing a tiger named Pete Weber. Pete has strung four. He has a 64-pin lead here in the semifinal match, Nelson. Well, Doug Kent just going through every bowler's nightmare, struggling on a championship round in national television, but he's a great young player. There are so many uh, great players, uh, members of the Professional Bowlers Association. What a joy it's been to be with uh, Mark Gerberich and Kevin Shippey, my pal. <laughs> and Kevin is in the truck. Well, Doug, a nice paycheck, bud. Third place finish in the last ABC telecast. Not too bad. <laughs> There's 87 other guys that wish they could have had your spot as there were 90 players in the field. All right. Doug won his uh, first match, of course, over Steve Jaros, 200 to 199. And here is that tiger I was talking about. jokes for the crowd he said he kept it out of the gutter that'd be the only thing in fact there's nothing can keep him from winning he's already in the 200s the best Doug Kent can do is 169 it's a whitewash one of the stars and this is his wife that made this journey so enjoyable tomorrow on ABC Sports at 2 Eastern 1 Central 11 a.m. Pacific hey get this it's the California 500 presented by Napa from California Speedway all the fast cars big names will be there including Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Terry Labonte. Pete Weber wins the game, potential 235, 10 pin cross lane. It's going to be Weber and Williams, one and two in the world in our final match. How fitting, huh, partner? How fitting. ABC deserved uh, that type of pairing in the final match, I believe, because um, the, the combination of CBA and ABC it's a winning daily government. Okay. Pete Weber, 231. This ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowling Show will continue after these messages. And a word from our ABC station. comes down look at the championship match we have coming up numbers one and two in the world Pete Weber winning over Doug Kent 231 to 158 and now he has to face Walter Ray Williams earlier we said we were going to show you names of the people that have made this season 1997 so special here they are the guys and dolls I love working with take a look Terrific crew. Yes, and in memory of Les Weiss. Okay, Nelson, my boy. Well, Christopher, there are a lot of people that have been involved with the PBA, but for me, 23 years sitting next to you, 36 years the um, head of the, the professional bowler se series, and for 50 some years and continuing to be the benchmark that all of us as announcers are measured by. I'd like to reflect a few minutes on your story career. Let's watch Lieutenant Christopher Schenkel. It's a 41-yard attempt 
by Joe Azaro. He's three for three this year. It's up. No good. The New York Giants quarterback club. Chris Schenkel back again at the ABC studios in Grenoble. Dashing, beautiful, comely, short shoes, Peggy Fleming. And this is the putt that could break the record we spoke of a moment ago. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, a United States Open record of 275 for 72 holes. Jack Nicklaus. Perfect score for Nadia Tomini. The Cuban in dire trouble against the ropes. And the referee steps in. Combinations. Oh, and so, so long. Hipper. Rescue workers were frustrated as there was so little left of this flight, New York to Warsaw, carrying our United States boxing team and its officials. Bringing you competition between the finest bowlers in the world. It's a professional bowler's tour. Double exposure. Oh. And I'm putting on my little earpiece, but the uh, heck with it. We have it! We have it! No. Oh, no. Even Pete Weber got up. Look at Pete. second 300 perfect game but this by far the most valuable no Standing ovation for Chris Shanker. My friend, the song said it best, you are the best. I think the first 50 years of television, the two euphonous voices that we'll always remember, Walter Cronkite and Chris Schenkel. Thank you. Well, I compliment. Walter and I did the uh, first Olympic Games together at Squaw Valley for CBS in 1960. And I bet you taught him well like you've taught no, me. No, he taught me. <laughs> All I right. missed the opening ceremonies, and Walt Disney took my place. <laughs> All right, the championship game, the final game after 36 years on ABC television with the Professional Bowlers Tour. Number one on the bench, number two up. Three, six, ten. Uh, Pete, um... 84th TV appearance, uh, Walter Ray is 97th. It's the 11th this year for Walter Ray and the 10th this year for Pete, and they both have won two titles. The battle goes on. Now here he is. Here he is, the King Ben. Well, Walter, when I was talking to him earlier, Chris, said, I don't wonder why those guys are having so much trouble. The lanes seem pretty nice to me, but uh, when you're number one, maybe that's the way you always feel. Light or hard? I guess light would be better. 
Come on. Enjoying covering him. Also talking about his world championships in horseshoes. Oh, it's been fun. He won one last week uh, in Liberty, Kansas. Now here's the guy he's going to have to battle for a few more years to maintain that number one spot. Pete Weber. Well, the 248, not only is it difficult under normal circumstances, but with Pete's big hook, as you see him sliding by the head pin here, give it room, it doesn't hook. With, with Peter's big hook, he has to play a big hook into the 28. Good shot. Pete just about $4,500 shy of Walter Ray's um, battle toward the $2 million earned mark. Winner today here will get 18,000. Weber trails by three, third frame. <laughs> Not only is it difficult to hit the pocket, but it's surely difficult to carry the pins. When Pete gets that real sharp angle going in the pocket, the ball does not deflect off the one, three, and he chops the five straight back off the nine. Watch the ball. It's supposed to deflect into the nine, but no can do. Too much power. You know, uh, though a great supporter of this series when he was with us in the sports department is now our overall president of ABC, Bob Iger. And he loved the bowling series, and I know he, he still does. So, Bob, thanks to you for all the good things. <laughs> And to Steve Bornstein, to Steve Anderson, to Bob After, to Mark Mandel. There are so many you want to thank, though, and let's get back to the match, and I'll keep quiet. No, oh, you deserve <laughs> every bit of time you want. These matches will go on. If you look at the pernicious eyes of Pete Weber, his opponent, Walter Ray, one of his best assets is reading the lanes and adjusting. Let's see what he does here. God bless it. Man. Well, what do we do? Walter's <laughs> got to get the ball over to this four pin and slide it over into the 10. But this is probably a 10 or 15 to one shot. Even more difficult, Chris, because the center of the lane hooks too much. It hooks across the center and then wants to straighten out. It makes it very tough. Comments like that by my colleague Nelson Burton Jr. makes him the premier expert commentator in all of television. Believe me, we'll be back. What a lovely, lovely city on the other side of the Mississippi as we speak to you from Illinois, from the St. Clair Classic. Eight pins separating the two great players. There you see, look at the closeness of the battle toward two a million bucks. 18,000 available here, and Pete Weber is mm -hmm. going to bowl in a regional tournament, which is the central region. Stacy looks on with Dick uh, right after this tournament, so he has a chance to win another 5,000 in this building starting on Sunday. Pete <laughs> firing up now in his home area. That Walter Ray will be answering. You can count on it. He's 68 through the fourth, but now he's shooting in the fifth frame. Sheesh. Wow, that doesn't make any sense. Walter Ray, who's putting everything into every shot, you can see him just jumping at the foul line as he tries to accelerate his arm through to the target area. 
is somewhat lost, obviously, as his wife Paige Pennington looks on. He trails by 18. Each professional in this final match with 23 titles. All right, come on. Well, he has to do something on this left-hand lane. He was high 4-7, fairly close in the second lane and really thought he threw a quality shot in the fourth and had a 4-10 split. So he's either got to move in or muscle the ball down there. Let's see what happens. Carry. Good, good. And now a shot of four of the most wonderful children I've ever met. The children of Nelson Burton Jr. Look at those wow. beautiful ladies. Katrina on the left and Nikki on the, her right. Both out of college, so proud of them both. Now Pete Weber, who's trying to take Walter Ray Williams to school. Just a slight movement off the right. Good concentration by Peter. It's a way to go. This could be a key shot in the match. If he can open up a 28-pin lead, we've seen the scoring today just very low. That would be huge. Three, six, nine, ten. An obvious pull by Peter. We saw in the previous frame when he left the solid nine that he got the ball out there. Now he has to throw the hook ball again into this. Now normally you don't want to go across lane with a straight shot once we see the key is to carry out the nine pin. You have to take a chance on a chop. Let's see what Peter does. Well, whew, just a huge break. Uh, he missed that so far, he made it. As simple as that. America Online and ABC Sports. Keyword, ABC Sports. Have some fun with it. Seventh frame, 14 pin lead for Pete Weber. Championship match. The last telecast. <laughs> yeah. And though we do want to point out that there will be PBA Bowling on our sister uh, network, ESPN. Uh -huh. Steve Bornstein and the people have had it on ESPN, and Steve handles both ESPN and our ABC Sports. Starting in 98 for three consecutive years. Terry, baby, come on! the spare, Walter will trail Pete Weber by 14. Hey, Bo. Yes, you sir. Show the children what support uh, your family gives you, well, like Fran and our kids have given me. Johnny Weber here today. There is, yeah. I mean, Johnny Schenkel, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. and Look Johnny at those Weber two. And Tripper Burton and Brett Burton. We just saw him. Ten pin? Me? I never leave ten pins. Come on. What a facetious statement. He actually leaves more than anybody, Chris, because he hits the pocket the most. That's the pin you're going to leave the most. And here you see one of his best shots of the match does not get the desired result. Um, worthwhile because he does omit. He does let his feelings hang out. Peter, strike up in the seventh, can make, if he makes a strike here in the eighth, we'll have a 25 pin lead. That song? Wow. Well, at first, it's a mixed emotions. You watch when, <laughs> watch when Peter throws his ball. He thinks it's going in the gutter. Now watch Peter's reaction. Oh my gosh, it's going to be zero. Then all of a sudden, it starts turning left. He says, "Oh, this is the best one I've thrown the whole match." And his wife, nine more than he thought he was getting. You're absolutely correct. 
Okay, spare in the eighth ring for Pete Weber, Dick's son, and Tracy's husband. Juanita, by the way, Weber is at home. She's too nervous to come and watch her son. Uh, bowl. She up is, close and personal. <laughs> she's the only one in the Weber family that has not bowled a perfect game. Paula, John, Rich, and obviously the daddy have all bowled perfect games. Ninth frame. Three, six, ten, though. Well, Chris, we've just seen a lot of high shots and light shots and inextricable lane conditions here by the pros as Dick Weber. He says, well, you know, with my straight shot that I used to throw a little spin, I think I could hit this pair. Why is Peter throwing that big hook? <laughs> Tracy approves the situation for Walter Ray Williams Jr. is simply this. If he strikes out, he has 207. Pete Weber is going at a 199 pace. We can have a match. We can have a new champion for sure. Chris, we've both seen Walter many, many mm -hmm. times in this situation needing strikes to win the tournament, but not quite on such a demanding condition. Look at Peter, how nervous he is. His hands are shaking. He knows that Walter Ray needs two strikes to take the lead. Here we go, 10th frame. Come on, baby! As good as you can throw it, and guess who was applauding right with him? Mr. Class, Dick Weber, even though he's going against his son. Walter cannot shut out Peter. He can take the lead. Peter has control of his destiny. What a what a game for our final telecast, Bo. You're right, partner. As you see, Walter Ray. I'll tell you what. It takes Ooh. guts more than talent to come back like that. Sure, you can do it on an easy lane condition in the league when you can pull the ball off there. If there's no consequences of missing. He just threw three of the best strikes I've seen for the week, and Peter knows it. He knows what he has to do for the week. Mm, A 206. Mm, Chris, it's, it's fitting that a Weber will throw the final ball on ABC. His dad won the first telecast, right. which was actually taped in 1962 at Argo Lanes and shown later on in 63. Right now, Peter needs two strikes and eight to win. He must strike. <laughs> Walter Ray Williams Jr. is the champ. I'm watching this. John Schenkel, who got trapped in the crowd and couldn't get out here on camera. So, Walter Ray Williams, number one in the world, remains that way. We'll be back. Okay, today's winnings, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., 18,000, Pete Weber, 9,500, 7,000, and 5,000. There he is, number one in the world, and... He's quite a bowler, and so is his competitor, Pete Weber, who's standing and cheering as Matt Schellebarger, manager of St. Clair Bowl, and Bill Magello, the tournament chairman, are there with the crystal and with the check for 18000 Okay, um, coming up to a retrospective pretty quick. There's our son, John. I knew he'd... Uh... Chris, lead us into the final frame for the final time right now, partner. Not sure I can. Thank you. Till we meet again. Love you. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Shankel. Welcome to the first stop on the Professional Bowlers Association. Like a long, lonely stream, I keep running towards a dream. Moving on, moving on. Like an old dusty road, I 
It was easier to wink, and it's not so hard to cry either. Bob, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.